Hey there, hope you're having a wonderful day. In this video, we're going to go over some practice problems with functions. So if you've watched the previous videos, we've gone over functions, return types, parameters, default parameters, function overloading, generics and templates. And we've also gone over the difference between pass by value reference and const reference. So if you need to review any of those topics that I mentioned, I will link them in the video description below. So let's begin. We have two practice problems. And the first problem is, I want you to write a function called vector search that takes in a vector of elements and a target element. So two parameters. And this function should return true if the element is inside the vector. Otherwise, it should return false. So here I have two vectors. One is a vector of strings and the other is a vector of integers. And down here we have some print statements. So basically you need to define a function called a vector search. And we have these two vectors. So we are going to test the vector search function with these print statements. So the first one is checking if London is inside the city's vector. And the next one is Lisbon. And then we have one is inside the numbers vector and the other is 75 is inside the numbers vector. So here you can see I wrote true here, and that is because I want you to take into account type conversion. So true, if we convert this to an integer, this becomes one. For that reason, I pass in true, and this will check to see if one is in the number vector. All right, so here you can pause the video and try to come up with a solution. And then afterwards, we can go over the solution together. All right, so hopefully you have a working solution. Now let's go over the problem together. So this function returns a Boolean and it's called vector search and we are passing in a vector of elements so since we are passing in a vector and we are not going to modify the elements i'm going to pass it in as a const reference and in this case it's a vector of elements and the elements could be string or int it could be any type so we want to use a template for this so here i'm going to generalize the type so template type name and i'm just going to call it t so over here, we're going to pass in a vector of type t, and this is going to be passed by const reference. And let's call the parameter vec. And then we need a target element. So this is going to be of type t, and I'm just going to call this element. Now, in order to find if an element is in a vector, we have to loop through the vector and make some comparisons. So I'm going to create a Boolean called found and default it to false. Now let's loop through the vector. So for size t, i is equal to zero, i less than vec.size, i plus plus. If vec at index i is equal to element, we can say found is equal to true. And then we can return found over here. All right, so we have our vector search function. Now if I scroll down, you can see we have some errors here and we have some type errors here. So when we generalize the type to t, we expect these two parameters to be a vector of t and type t. And in this case, the last print statement, when we call vector search, we have a vector of integers and we're passing in an integer. So there's no issue there because they are both the same type. But we have an issue here in these three lines. And that is because here we are passing in a vector of integers and over here we are passing in a Boolean. And for these two, we have a vector of strings and this is a string, but it's actually implemented as a character array. So you can see when I hover over it, it says const car. So we have two solutions here. One, I can just convert that to a string so I can pass it into a string constructor like so. And now this const character would become the string type. And for the Boolean, I can cast this to an integer and now this will be okay. But I want this type conversion to happen within this function. And it would be very annoying if I had to do this every time for strings and cast the types. So what I can do is I can create another type name. So let's undo these. So here what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass in another type name, u, and here I'm going to change this to u. All right, so after I save the program, you can see the errors go away. Now if I save and run the program, you can see London is in the city's vector. We get one, and this is true. Lisbon is not in the city's vector, so Lisbon does not appear in this vector. Therefore, we get zero, which is false. One is in the numbers vector, so we have a one over here. And 75 is not in the numbers vector. Therefore, we get zero, which is false. 
Okay, so this is how you can write a function to search through a vector for an element. And this searching algorithm is called linear search. And the idea here is we just loop through the vector until we find the element, right? So if I have 10 elements, then I just search through 10 elements. If I have 100 elements, I search through 100 elements. And if I have a million, then I look through a million elements. That's why it is called linear search because the number of times I have to make this comparison, it would be linear to the number of elements in the vector. And we will talk more about algorithms in a much later video when I cover data structures and algorithms in C++. Okay, so one more thing I want to mention is that Yes, it is a linear search. I would look through every single element, but we can do something that will optimize this function. So for instance, I was looking for the string London in the cities vector, and London is actually at the first index or index one. So if I had a vector of a thousand elements, well, London is already at index one. So it wouldn't make sense for me to continue looking through the rest of the elements in the vector. Instead, what I can do is something called an early exit. So over here, I can get rid of this variable. And instead of assigning a variable to true, I can just return true. So the idea here is this is an early exit. Basically, whenever you return in a function, you end the function. So basically, I am returning true at the exact moment I find the target element in the vector. So I won't continue searching through the rest of the elements. And therefore, I won't continue this for loop. I would just exit out of this function completely. And if I make it over here, this means that this for loop finished and I never hit this if condition statement. Therefore, my target element is not in the vector. So over here, I can just return false. All right, now if I save and run the program. You can see we get the same exact results. Okay, so that's problem one done. We have a linear search function that will iterate through the vector to find an element. And because it is a generic function with this template, we can use this same function for different types. All right, so we have problem two, and it is similar to problem one, but instead of finding if an element exists in the vector, we want to count how many times that element appears in the vector. So I want you to write a function called vector count that takes in two parameters, a vector of elements and a target element, and the function returns an integer indicating how many times the target element appears in the vector. So over here, we have the same two vectors from the first practice problem, and we have some print statements, so if I call vector count for Rome, you can see Rome appears twice in the vector. So this should return true. Lisbon does not appear in this vector. So we should return zero. And if I look for one in numbers, in this case, this is 1.0 F, which is a float. And this would convert to an integer. So basically we have three of them in numbers. So this should return three and 75 does not appear in this vector. So we should get zero. All right, so take some time to solve this problem. The solution would be similar to the previous problem solution. So yeah, just take a moment to try to come up with a solution and then we'll work on the problem together. All right, so let's go over the problem. So the solution is going to be very similar. So we are going to return an integer and the function is called vector count. We'll take in a const reference of the vector. So const vector, and this is going to be a generic type T and we'll call it vec. So up here, I'm going to define a template, type name t. And just like with the previous problem, since this is a float and these are character arrays, we're going to end up with some type errors. So I'm going to create another type name, u, and this is going to be type u element. So I'm going to create an integer to keep track of the count. So I'm going to call it int total is equal to zero. And then here we just iterate through the vector. So for size t, i is equal to zero. i is less than vec.size, i plus plus. If vec at index i is equal to element, then we do total plus equal one. Or you can do total plus plus, either way works. So I'm just going to do plus equal one here. And then I'm going to return total. Okay, so let's save and run the program. And you can see London appears in the cities vector two times. And uh, oops, this should have been Rome. So let me change this to Rome and rerun the program. All right, and as you can see, Rome appears in the cities vector two times. Lisbon does not appear in the cities vector, so we get zero. 
1 appears in the numbers vector 3 times, and 75 is not in the numbers vector, so we get 0 over here. Alright, so we have a working solution. And one more thing I want to go over is, we can actually simplify this code a bit, because this returns a boolean, and a boolean is either true or false. And if it's true, we get 1, and false, we get 0. So in C++, we can convert booleans to integers. So I can rewrite this code. So let me comment this out. And here I can do total plus equal vec of i is equal to element. So I'm adding a boolean to this integer total. So if this is true, we get 1. So we add 1, just like we did before. Otherwise, if it's false, this becomes 0. So we do total plus equal 0. And this does nothing, so you're just adding 0 to the integer, and nothing changes. So let me get rid of this. And now, if I save and run the program, you can see we get the same result as before. Okay? So that's one cool trick to use in C++. If you are adding 1, if it's true, and 0, if false, you can just directly add the boolean. So hopefully you were able to come up with solutions to these problems. If not, Hopefully you understand how to create the solutions to these problems after watching this video. And if you found this video helpful, make sure you give this video a like. If you have any questions, let me know down below in the comments. And if you want to stay up to date for more C++ content, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And uh, yeah, that's it for this video, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.